And Alexandria asks a question about probiotics and SIBO, wondering why everywhere on the internet these days, it says that lactobacillus blends are bad for SIBO because it worsens the overgrowth. Is this true? Alexandria, great question. This is one that comes up very often, and I feel like we cannot answer the question enough. Let me lead with just a few, I guess, epistemological thoughts. Bias. Experts don't know everything about everything, myself included, if I may refer to myself as any sort of expert, as a person, as a scientist, a clinician. No one knows everything about everything. It's also, I think, easy for a given thought leader, expert speaker to be misconstrued, meaning they may not like probiotics just because they're more comfortable with other things. In fact, I'll give Dr. Michael Camilleri from the Mayo Clinic huge credit for admitting on the podcast that his feeling is that he, I'm paraphrasing here, so Michael, forgive me if I get some of the details wrong, but essentially he may be a little bit biased against probiotics because in his center, he's seeing people who have already tried probiotics, so it's not something he's focusing on. Therefore, he may have a skewed perspective. So if you listen to an interview with someone as such, they may tell you wonderful and very science-guided things about the therapeutics they like, and since they don't have much to say about probiotics, may lead you to incorrectly conclude that you shouldn't use them. Now, your question's more specific. Your question hints, I think, at a further, more pernicious degree of bias, which is people directly saying not to use lactobacillus and bifidobacterium because it worsens SIBO. Now, I can also tell you we did a video dedicated to this in its entirety, and we dove pretty deep, and we put up whatever science the expert was pointing to, which was usually, I shouldn't say usually, which was definitionally poor quality, observational, small studies against the clinical trials demonstrating that lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blends remedy SIBO successfully. Let me just give you one or two of the high points. 2017 meta-analysis. This was summarizing various clinical trials, including some using lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, some using soil-based, and some using Saccharomyces boulardii. Here's their conclusion. The SIBO decontamination rate achieved with probiotics alone was 53.2%, which was comparable to that observed in a meta-analysis of antibiotics at 51.1%. So pretty clear, pretty compelling. An additional study, 2019 clinical trial, administering a blend of lactobacillus with bifidobacterium plus Saccharomyces boulardii, quoting, IBS patients with SIBO benefited most from the administration of probiotics. And there are other studies also showing that probiotics benefit SIBO. And this is because, as I've been saying for so long, probiotics release antimicrobial peptides as this schematic from the journal Gut is depicting called bacteriosins amongst other things. And they positively affect the epithelium. They produce these bacteriocins and other antimicrobial peptides that kill off things like SIBO and candida. And they perform this function known as competitive exclusion, where they crowd out the things that you don't want to have trying to take up residence in your gut. So in short, the answer to this question, Alexandria, in my opinion, with all due respect, is bias. One other thing I was thinking about before starting this recording and answering this question is, and again, I can be wrong on any of these things. This is more just my opinion. So take this with a grain of salt. I gave you the data-driven answer on this already. So there is the data. The data speak for themselves. But I'm trying to account for how is it that esteemed researchers and clinicians seem to have this antiprobiotic perspective. Another one might be that some of these researchers are studying other things. And if you look at the studies they've published, you won't see any of them that are interventional studies using probiotics. In fact, you'll see association data and spinning of that association data to come up with an antiprobiotic position. So that's really unfortunate, right? And, and so one of the things that we're working on doing is having esteemed researchers on the podcast in the future to discuss probiotic research. What I think's happened here is there's a handful of thought leaders who are at 
major academic centers in publishing research that have plugged into various podcasts and platforms and amplified their voices. And really unfortuitously, the people that have plugged in seem to have an antiprobiotic position. And that's all fine and good. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but we want to separate opinion from fact. And again, like I mentioned with the other comments on acromancia, I don't know that people in our field are doing an adequate job to distinguish their opinion from fact, and maybe even more importantly, distinguishing from when they have a viewpoint that is not a byproduct of an exhaustive review of the research literature. Because as I shared with you, when we have meta-analyses answering a question, that should be the data that's referenced. And again, if you want to get the really deep dive looking at the science the experts recommended, and then the science that clearly refutes that because it's so much more rigorous, see our video where we discuss this in more detail. Okay, hope that helps. And you know what, really practically at the end of the day, you can always try a lactobacillus bifidobacterium formula and see how you feel. The worst case scenario, it doesn't sit well with you. You have a transient temporary reaction. You stop and within a few days or so, you're back to normal. Again, always discuss these things with your healthcare provider, but this is the data-driven perspective. When you dig and you fact check and you lay all the information out objectively, this is the clear conclusion that you come to that lactobacillus and bifidobacterium probiotics are efficacious for SIBO.